Lesson 65 Person In any language, a verb can have several different characteristics or properties. It can have tense, meaning when it's referring to, if it's referring to the future, the present, or the past. It can have something called voice, which is whether it's active or passive. In this particular lesson, I'd like to tell you about another characteristic that verbs can have called person. A verb can be in the first person, second person, or third person. And you can tell if a verb is first person, second person, or third person by looking at the pronouns that go along with that verb. If the pronoun that goes along with the verb is I or we, that means it's first person. That means it's the person who is doing the talking or the person who is doing the writing. If you write a novel and in the novel you say, I did this, I did that, I went to the coffee shop, I went to the park, then you are narrating that novel in the first person. Second person is when you're talking about the person who is being spoken to. So if I say, you're doing this, you're doing that, then I'm speaking in the second person. And then finally, the third person is when you're talking about someone else, someone who's not involved directly in the conversation. That's he, she, it, or they. If I say, she went to the park, he went to the coffee shop, then I'm narrating or speaking in the third person. And by the way, each person, as you can see in the chart here, can be singular or plural. So I and we are both first person, but they're different with regard to number. Number is the term we use to talk about singular and plural. So I is first person singular, and we is first person plural. In English, the word you is both second person singular and second person plural. Many languages out there have a separate word for singular you and plural you, but English doesn't really have one. And so to try to distinguish between singular and plural you, we make up new words. For example, in the South, where I grew up, we would say y'all if we're talking to more than one person. If we're talking to just one person, we say you. So if I see a friend of mine and I want to ask that one person whether or not he has had breakfast, I'll say, have you had breakfast yet? But if I see several friends and I want them to know that I'm asking all of them the question, I might say, have y'all had breakfast yet? And so the word y'all in that context is a second person plural pronoun. And so as you can see here on the chart, that can be a helpful thing because it helps to correspond to the Russian word that we'll be studying that is a second person plural pronoun. Again, many languages have this, Spanish, French, German, Latin. They all have a separate word for singular you and for plural you. That is a separate pronoun. But in English, we do not. So we make up words like y'all. Up north, you might hear someone say, yous guys. I've been told that in the Pittsburgh area, they say yins as a second person plural pronoun. So all around the country, we have these different second person plural pronouns that have just been sort of made up to fill the gap here, to fill the void in our second person plural pronoun area because it's useful. It's useful to have a singular you and a plural you. So we just make them up. And as you can see in the second chart in this lesson, in Russian, there is a separate pronoun for second person singular and second person plural. And you already know that because we've been studying these pronouns over the past few lessons. So just for practice, let's go through these exercises here to practice recognizing 
the different kinds of pronouns and verbs. So in each exercise, let's figure out what the subject is, if it's first, second, or third person, and then if it's singular or plural. And this will be good practice for anyone who wants to learn a language. In number one, I is the subject. The verb is am, and that's first person. I am is a first person pronoun and a first person verb. And it's first person singular, too. If it were plural, it would be we instead of I. In number two, you are a nice person. We can tell from the context here that the word you is singular because it says you are a nice person. If it were plural, it might say you are nice people. So the word you here is definitely second person singular. That's a good lesson there on how to look at the context of a sentence. Again, in this particular book, we're going to use the word you for second person singular, and we're going to use the word y'all for second person plural. In number three, she is the subject, is is the verb. That is third person singular. In number four, we are going to the park. That is narrated in the first person plural. We and are are first person plural pronouns and verbs. In number five, we have the pronoun y'all. That's the pronoun that we will use in this book to designate the second person plural. And so this exercise, number five, is narrated in the second person plural. Number six, they is the subject and eat is the verb. That's third person plural. Number seven, he is. That's third person singular. Number eight, it is. That's also third person singular. In number nine, we're back to the second person plural with the pronoun y'all. So y'all here is indicating that someone is speaking to more than one person. In number 10, flowers is the subject. That's a plural noun. There's really no pronoun in this sentence. Nevertheless, that sentence is in the third person. The subject is flowers. The verb is the word are. And so that is third person narrative. That sentence is being told or narrated in the third person. We have a third person verb, which is the verb are.